Uh, hello everyone and uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity to talk to in this platform. Uh, my name is Arun Rathuri, I'm Chief Science Officer at Entos Pharmaceuticals and uh, I will be presenting today our platform and how uh, we are actually using this platform for nucleic acid delivery. Uh, this company was started by, founded by John Lewis, who is uh, uh, a full professor at University of Alberta and the company is a spin-off from his lab. Uh, I have been working with him uh, um, since the start of the company and uh, uh, Roy Duncan Wright and the Steam Wright is a very important member of this uh, company because he's the one who is discoverer of uh, fast protein I'm going to talk about and which is at the core of our technology. I'm also very happy to uh, you know, share the news that although it's been some time, but in the beginning of this year, we were joined by two amazingly talented uh, people, Jason Ding, the chief business officer, uh, who has joined us from Deloitte. He was uh, handling uh, Deloitte uh, Life Sciences for Canada. And Steve Chen, after his stints in Takeda and Lily, he has joined us as a chief medical officer and is running our clinical programs. We have been located in three places. Uh, our research and development activity is mainly uh, done uh, from San Diego office where I'm located right now, but we have a big uh, R&D lab in Edmonton and uh, the activity is collectively done from these two centers. Uh, we have manufacturing facility in uh, now, well, we have procured a manufacturing facility in San Diego and we have one manufacturing facility we use in Edmonton uh, uh, for our uh, uh, phase one and phase two activities. We also have uh, our corporate office in London. So right now we have a presence in three countries and uh, uh, happy to share the news that we have grown. Uh, we are touching almost 50 people now and um, uh, hoping to go to phase three soon. So uh, we all know that lipid nanoparticle based delivery or nucleic acid delivery has been a challenge for many years, uh, but uh, you know, uh, we all also know that it has seen quite a success in the last few years. Of course, COVID is a big example, but other than that, uh, there have been, uh, you know, good advancement uh, in the clinical program and in many cases, commercialized product in case of uh, genetic disorders, whether it is liver or in some cases uh, in lungs uh, targeting. So nucleic acid delivery using lipid nanoparticle or AAB has seen quite a success. And I think this is the time when, uh, this technology is going to actually bring a lot of solutions uh, in the in, in, in disease models, whether it is animal models or in the clinical stage. Now, broadly speaking, we all know that when it comes to nucleic acid delivery, uh, it can be uh, attained, it can be achieved by two kinds of approaches. One is the viral approach, which is AAV based approach. And the second is a lipid nanoparticle based approach. We have, we have seen quite a success with both the program. Both the programs have been successful clinically and have commercialized product uh, and, uh, and, and are working effectively for the nucleic acid delivery. But we go if you go a little bit deep into it uh, and see that what are the limitations and advantage of uh, these two technology, we'll see that when it comes to AV, uh, of course, it has very good penetration and you can actually use it for some tropism also to deliver in different uh, tissues or organs. Uh, tolerability, tolerability, at least at the lower dose, is uh, well accepted and it can be, uh, it, it, it is highly tolerable, especially at the lower doses. But we also know that with AAV, the biggest problem is immunogenicity. Redosing is a problem because it's virus based and so it evokes a very high immunogenic response after first dose. So redosability becomes a problem. Another problem with AAV is, of course, uh, the size because there is a size limitation uh, that can be incorporated in AAV and manufacturing has its own challenges. Now, some of these uh, disadvantages of AAV-based technology are definitely overcome by lipid nanoparticle-based approach or non-viral approach, uh, especially immunogenicity. It can be redosed, uh, you know, uh, and, and it has been successfully shown to uh, deliver mRNA, siRNA, uh, but we also know that because this uh, way of delivery involves highly potent ionizable lipid, tolerability to an extent is uh, an issue, especially if you want to go extrahepatic, uh, you know, you want to surpass liver. So, so the 
So, so one thing which we always knew from the beginning when we were developing the program is that what is it that are the limitations of the technology that exists or are going to be the limitation in future and how actually that those limitations can be overcome. And I think uh, and I believe actually that uh, uh, fusionic technology by Entos Pharmaceuticals is the answer for that. But because what we have done is we have uh, we have taken the benefits of these two platforms and merged it into our technology. That is to say that lipid nanoparticle, uh, highly potent but largely toxic ionizable lipid has been taken out in which brief if I explain the platform and a very small fusion protein derived from the virus is incorporated that will do the heavy duty of the delivery. In nutshell, this is how I will define the lipid nanoparticle of Entos and that is the reason we call it not lipid nanoparticle but proteolipid vesicles because it's a vesicle, lipid vesicle which has on the surface a virus derived small peptide which basically is a fusion peptide, smallest known fusion peptide that does the job of delivery. Uh, so, so what is uh, FAST protein? FAST protein stands for Fusion Associated Small Transmembrane Protein. This is the only, no, uh, uh, only non-enveloped virus uh, to express a fusion protein. It basically behaves like any class 1, class 3 fusion proteins with the only difference that it is only 15, 13 to 15 kiloalkin, very small protein that actually has a capability of uh, uh, fusion. Uh, and and we have taken advantage. This is basically I have to mention that this is basically uh, a discovery of Roy Duncan, who is uh, our team member, and published series of papers in uh, late 1990s and early 2000s where he showed that this smallest known uh, uh, fusion protein is uh, very potent when it comes to uh, the fusionics property. And this is this is one of the examples from his early papers in 2005. This paper was published where he showed that this, um, when you encapsulate uh, the, the the antigen for the delivery, uh, if you stop the uh, uh, lipid interaction, you stop the, inter uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 intake of uh, the antigen. However, the most important point: if you stop the endocytosis it is minimally affected, which means that this uh, delivery by fusion is independent of endosomal pathway. And that actually is one of the key factors uh, through which we uh, acquire higher efficiency and has a different mechanism other than lipid nanoparticle. <clears throat> So now this discovery, as I said, that we it was it was it initiated by Roy Duncan and the group in Dalhousie uh, in uh, early 2000. From that time to now, we have come uh, quite far. We have uh, generated second generation and third generation uh, uh, fast proteins, which has uh, like uh, five to tenfold higher uh, um, uh, fusion properties. And uh, this process is continuous process, and, uh, um, and and right now we are at the third generation stage uh, with the with, with with the continuous work in this line to have uh, next version of these molecules, which may be even smaller, uh, while maintaining the fusionic properties. So in in short, uh, the the, the proteolipid vesicle is actually a lipid vesicle which has a. Uh, fast protein on the surface, it mainly uses neutralized neutral lipids and does not uh, require highly potent ionizable lipids, although we do require some ionizable lipid or cationic lipid to neutralize the charge, but it is only for the purpose of neutralizing the charge as the fusion and delivery right into the cytosol is done through a fast protein which is present on the surface of uh, the proteolipid vesicles. Now, <clears throat> this is a very important slide and, uh, and, and, and as we all know that uh, making a formulation, uh, whether it is lipid nanoparticle based or uh, proteolipid vesicle based in the lab is really important uh, to show uh, something at a small scale is important. But the most important thing is what is the scalability of that uh, formulation, that process that's manufacturing. And very early on, we knew that, that these uh, scale up can be a bottleneck and uh, we associated ourselves with a precision nano system and right now I'm talking about in 2013, 2014, 2015 uh, when uh, we started working with nano assembler uh, uh, benchtop uh, at the scale of 1 to 5 ml uh, spark at 250 to 25 microliters and extensively worked on these uh, microfluidity based system to optimize our process. And uh, when uh, PNI came up with the Blaze, uh, we were the first few ones who bought Blaze. I'm very proud to say that we have now at least four uh, Blaze 
four to five uh, nano assembler and a GMP compliant machine. So uh, as, as I was mentioning that this, this, was, this was always uh, 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 in our mind that if you want to make uh, formulation, we need to have a clear path that how we're going to take it from the lab to the clinic. And PNI's microfluid system obviously helped in this that. I'm very happy and proud of this relationship. Uh, we started making articles at you know few microliters to few ml scale. Now, now on a weekly basis, we make liters of uh, 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 formulations for many large scale uh, studies and uh, uh, the product consistency, reproducibility and repeatability is single most important thing when it comes to you know, performing experiment at different sites and we have been able to do it through this association with PNI. Now this is an example of how proteolipid lipid vesicles work. On the left side, you would see that uh, uh, you know we have this lipid mix, which are highly tolerable lipids, and uh, you can see that when we add it, you don't see any death, but then you don't see any transfection also. And these are generally hard to hard to transfect cell lines in primary cell lines like HUEC, primary rats, uh, primary uh, astrocytes. But once you incorporate a fast protein in the same lipid mix you see almost 100% transfection. So it's basically, this slide basically depicts that how we have chosen the lipid nanoparticles, which actually are highly tolerable, but needs proteolipid, uh, protein, fast protein on the surface for the delivery. And this is actually our process of uh, screening uh, lipid mix based on what kind of cell lines we want to go and uh, what is the target organ. This is this slide basically explains uh, like how we actually uh, select uh, a formulation in general. We all know that in a conventional lipid nanoparticle, there is a 50% ionizable lipid, and then there's cholesterol, there is helper lipid, which in this case, like I have given an example of DSPC, and of course we have pegged for various purposes, uh, whether it is sizing or uh, the biodistribution and other things. Generally, the ratio we are talking about is 10 is to 1 to 15 is to 1 of ionizable lipid to the cargo. Uh, because we do not need ionizable lipid for the delivery and it is only needed, needed for that, we screened for multiple ion, cationic and ionizable lipid which are just sufficient to neutralize the charge but has no effect whatsoever uh, in terms of the toxicity. That is to say that highly tolerable. And based on that we selected uh, uh, a series of uh, lipids that can neutralize the charge but has no effect whatsoever either for the delivery part or for the tolerability toxicity. So they do not contribute anything in terms of toxicity, but are well, uh, they are efficient in utilizing the charge. Because of that, the ionizable lipid needed for, in our case, is at least five to 10 times less than what is needed uh, in conventional lipids. And we do not need uh, um, cholesterol in our formulation. This is one of the examples of like uh, the different uh, um, uh, route of administration, this uh, systemic on the left side, uh, intramuscular administration. Intrathecal is something which is a, a big project uh, in uh, ENTOS uh, for the CNS delivery. And on the right side is uh, oral administration. Uh, some of the other programs which I have not included here slides are intranasals, uh, nebulizations and other things, uh, hoping to create a, uh, the full deck in the next six months uh, with a different route of uh, Delivery. This is basically a summary of like that. Uh, what 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 Entos is uh, in uh, has been uh, performing as far as the internal program or as far as collaborative work are covering pretty much all routes of injections. Another example which I have not included here is a localized injection like in eye uh, or, or ICV. So because of the uh, high tolerability of our formulation, no route of administration is actually limited for this technology and this platform. Now this is an example, another example that why we say that we can go extra hepatic in this particular case, this particular formulation, you can see the widespread distribution in uh, uh, African green monkey. Uh, you can see here the liver is the sixth organ, not the first organ. And you can see that by and large, uh, we are hitting pretty much all the tissues we analyzed. So one of, again, one example that because uh, we can go extra hepatic with the dose and with the tropism, uh, we are not restricted to only liver delivery. Another uh, um, um, uh, way of modifying our uh, proteolipid vesicle is uh, making them the targeting uh, proteolipid vesicle. And we can do that because of the alignment of our fast protein. The fast protein can align itself with carboxyl terminal out or N terminal out, uh, which is 
at the ratio of 50-50. So if the carbox carboxy terminal is out, this would mean that we can actually attach a ligand there and use that property for the targeting in the tissues. And we have successfully shown that. These are the program, internal programs we are running with, uh, uh, with many other ligands for uh, uh, different target, uh, 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 targets, whether it is um, um, uh, through the IV route or different routes like intra, uh, intrathecal. Now, this is an example of, uh, of course, like one example with, uh, uh, especially in case of uh, a messenger RNA delivery, which has been quite successfully shown. Uh, we all know that how transient the expression is and uh, it does shoot up within eight to 10 hours, but then mRNA also, uh, the signal die, dies down very fast and it is not surprising why it does so. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, um, advantage of uh, our platform is that we are not limited to mRNA or siRNA delivery. This is an example of uh, DNA delivery. And you can see that after 63 days, pretty much we are hitting all the cells the same way the signal was there after four days. So this is an advantage of our system that not only we can use it for small siRNAs or mRNA, but DNA, which may have a very clear cut advantage over mRNA when it comes to the prolonged signal. And the fact that our system can deliver um, uh, DNA as efficiently, if not more efficiently than RNA, uh, that, 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 that is a added advantage of our system. And we have shown, actually this is one example, but we have shown consistent signal up to an ear uh, through the intramuscular route uh, delivering DNA using our platform. Now, this is another example that why uh, uh, this our platform is different from a traditional lipid nanoparticle delivery. And uh, what we have seen is that in our hand, when we compare uh, DNA delivery uh, using the conventional ionizable lipid formulation versus uh, our formulation, we see that there is a huge immune response and the factors like PNF-alpha, IL-6, IFN are thousands of fold higher than uh, 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 the response we get by our PLB is clearly explaining that most of the toxicity uh, probably is coming through this uh, immune response, which we do not see it in our case because of uh, why, because we uh, do not uh, um, uh, use uh, the potent ionizable lipids. That probably is, and cholesterol, that probably is causing actually the high immune response. One question that is obvious question and uh, 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 and and uh, is that because we are using a virus based protein, uh, what about the redosability? And we knew right from the start that uh, hard to explain at that time why, but we uh, do not see much of the immunogenicity because even for the quality control purpose, when we were trying to generate. Um, you know, uh, antibodies in small animals uh, using fruits adjuvant, we had a very uh, challenging task. It took us six years to generate antibody against fast protein and the reason being its exo domain is like I think very small and uh, there are other factors we have screened it through for immunogenicity. It has very less uh, you know epitopes for that and uh, but despite of that we need to actually see that how redosability uh, works in our hand and this is one example where uh, the proteal bit vesicles were injected uh, five times and we could not see any, uh, you know, uh, detectable uh, anti-fast antibody. We did see actually anti-luciferase antibody, but there was no anti-fast antibody. And we have done this experiment now multiple times, and we do not, whether it is non-human primate or animals, uh, small animals, and we have not seen antibody generated against, uh, detectable antibody generated against uh, uh, fast protein. So in short, uh, the, we have seen in large animals to like uh, multiple uh, rat and mouse study that uh, proteal lipid vesicles are highly tolerable uh, 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 lipid vesicles that do not generate any kind of complement activation we have checked in uh, uh, multiple systems. And in our GLP toxicology study, it has no signs of any toxicity. We have gone up to actually uh, in mouse up to the dose of 80 mg per kg. And I am pretty sure some of uh, you who have familiar with the, the you know, maximum tolerable dosage ionizable lipid uh, will uh, appreciate that. And uh, in, in, in uh, anim uh, mouse, uh, in uh, um, non-human primate, we have gone up to 20 mg per kg. 
uh, uh, and and have not seen any signs of uh, you know acute toxicity. Uh, we have completed this shed should have been updated by me. We just completed our phase two with COVID vaccines. And uh, again, uh, uh, DSMC has unanimously recommended in, in case of phase one to phase two. Phase two final report is yet to come because there are absolutely no signs of any uh, issue when it comes to tolerability. I, I would like to actually uh, also uh, like uh, explain briefly in a couple of minutes that what is the path we take when it comes to uh, uh, you know optimizing um, uh, formulations uh, uh, for uh, our platform. So our approaches has been uh, when we started seven eight years back, we were restricting ourselves to you know in model cell lines. We generally don't use uh, uh, those systems for the analysis and screening because. Um, more often than not, it does not reflect the right real pictures. So generally, we actually restrict ourselves to primary cells, uh, organotypic slides, and small mo animal models for uh, screening our uh, 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 proteolipid vesicles. Trophism is something which obviously we uh, take advantage of in terms of the delivery. Um, we do play with the parameters of a uh, microfluidic system. Obviously, that is... Uh, uh, very important when it comes to playing with the size, uh, controlling the size, which obviously helps in the distribution and encapsulation efficiency. Other than that, we do uh, actually have a library of lipids, uh, which are highly tolerable lipids, which we actually uh, use for the tropism. Uh, buffer composition, another thing which helps in, we all know, in uh, encapsulation efficiency, as well as, uh, you know, um, uh, in, so in some cases, how fast you can concentrate uh, the product uh, in TFF, uh, all those factors. So basically, in short, uh, our nanopart uh, final proteolipid vesicle uh, for a particular uh, targeting or for the wide scale biodistribution is a result of playing with the uh, lipid components, uh, component uh, like uh, helper lipids, PEG, and the microfluidic flow rates, which actually um, um, uh, give us the formulation which we need for the end use. Uh, I'll I, I, like this is basically this is an example of what I just explained that how we actually uh, you you know go for certain kind of formulation. For example, in this case, we wanted to have a liver formulation. Um, uh, for that, we actually screened using these criteria, and you can see this is siRNA. You can see liver and lung. In both cases, you see ninety five more than ninety five percent. Knockdown. In some other cases, uh, like people, like we have this series of ex internal experiments right now we are doing where we provide uh, a tissue specific knockdown uh, 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 using the trophism, uh, trophism. Of course, it is not possible to knock down one organ and not touch other. We know that that's not possible. But the idea is that if we can avoid some organs and focus uh, in the knockdown on some others, and whether it can be achieved. This is an example where the knockdown was not needed in lungs. And uh, you can see that if you have to make a formulation around that, first important thing is that this has been dosed actually uh, three times and with almost no weight loss, right? So again, uh, reassuring that how tolerable these formulations are. And in this particular case, you will see that almost 90% knockdown in liver with no knockdown in lung and around 35% and 30% knockdown in the kidney. Again, an example that how we are actually working with all these parameters to have some sort of specificity in terms of targeting an organ. Uh, Entos has a lot of affiliates and sister companies and a lot of programs running and uh, we are uh, very happy that uh, we just completed the phase two for one of our vaccine programs. We are in various stages with our different companies. Uh, uh, our, our, our association with Lilly was uh, announced uh, some eight to nine months ago and uh, we are running multiple programs with them. We are running a rare disease program with Biomarine, age, aging program with Ocean and uh, <clears throat> very excited to be at uh, this uh, stage right now because I think this is a very exciting time for lipid nanoparticle, AAV or in our case, PLV based nucleic acid delivery. Uh, because I firmly believe that the, the answers to many uh, unsolved questions is uh, this kind of delivery platform. Uh, and with this, I would like to thank the team. I think I should have updated this also. There are a lot of people actually who have uh, helped us to, um, you know, uh, reach at this stage. Uh, and um, thank you to the, our team, which has grown from uh, four to five people just a few years back to almost 50. 
and uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity and i'll take any questions you have thank you